because there is no call on earth that doesn't involve obstacles and tough things with a great price. You have a great call, and I believe God gives everyone a great call. I don't believe some have a great call and some don't. Some may look greater, some may not, but it's all as great. God has a great call for us. He's got a great call for you. But something that's great requires great commitment and great perseverance. Lord, I'm going through. No matter what happens, I'm going to get, I know there are times, there are days you're not going to want to go ahead. But those are the days where the perseverance, where it means everything. That's where perseverance has to kick in. You do, you go on when you feel like it. You go on when you don't feel like it. There are times in ministry you just don't feel like There are times I know Paul didn't feel like going on, but he always remembered the calling. I mean, years later, it was like it happened yesterday. I remember what God did. And there are times you have to remind yourself, God, you called me. God, I'm standing on this word. No matter what happens, I'm going forward with you. And you need to know that because there are times where if you don't know that, you won't hold on. Build in faith. Look at verse 20. He will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. Now, notice something, a key to success in God. Notice something they have here. They have confidence. It says, he will prosper us, so we're going forward. And that, I've shared this a number of times, you, faith is not just, I believe in this, and I believe that this is true, and I believe that this is true. That's great, but that's not the fullness of what faith is. The fullness of what faith is, it's an active thing. There are times you choose to believe, but it's an act of confidence in God. That's what it means. A confidence with God. We need to be confident people, not in ourselves, but in God's power, in God's goodness, in the blood of Jesus, in the resurrection of Messiah, and the fact that God wins in the end, no matter what. We need to be confident in God. God wants you confident. If you're not in God's will, you can't be confident. Get in God's will, but then get confident about God. The enemy is always wanting you to be not confident in God. Be confident in no matter what. They have said, listen, God's favor is on this, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it because of that. Notice something else that you see here. They cannot complete the work of God unless they begin the work of God. There are people who have all the ingredients have zeal, they have ideals, they have dreams to help and to be part, do great things for God, except they never start. Do you ever have to do something and you keep on finding distractions so you don't have to do it? You know, I want to do it, but now the pencil isn't sharp enough, so let me do that. You know, and you are, my chair is not right, you know. And you do, oh, the desk is not right. Just do it, you know, just start, even if it's little. Do, take a step in God's calling. It could be a little step, but you take the step that breaks the barrier. And when you're building a house, the most important part of the house is what? Absolute boy, you're good. You're getting good after this time. Wow. It is the foundation. It is absolutely, if you skip with the foundation, you want to get right to the kitchen and bedroom and the drapes and all that, but you didn't do a well foundation, it's all going to be messed up. And you're going to live with that. So the key thing with them and the key thing with everything is everything rests on the foundation. Whenever you do something where you're going to fulfill your calling in God, the foundation is prayer and you in God's presence. That's where it begins. That's where it always begins. And it's so important that whatever you do for God, you start with a right foundation, right motive, right from God. And that applies to everything you do. And it applies to even, I mean, in everything, and, and not only that, and the other thing is that in God, what is good will take work. It's free. We are not saved by works, but, the, but God calls us to work our salvation and calls us to great works. And so no matter what it is, a good marriage takes work. A good ministry takes work. A good relationship, good parenthood takes work. All these things take work in God, but we have to be committed. Lord, this is worth something. I'm going to put into it every day of my life. What, and your, your, your walk is from God, but it takes work. Prayer and the Bible, but it takes work. And we have to commit to that. And one of the things that, uh, that you see in Nehemiah is that everybody has something to do. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter if they're priests. It doesn't matter if they're garbage collectors. They all have a part. Nobody in God is underqualified. Everyone is called, everyone is, is given a role to do, and no role, I don't believe any role is more important than another. But everything works together. 
Some say, you know, but this, you know, they, you say, oh, I want to help out. You know, well, you know, but I'll do, this is my calling, and I will only help out if, you, if it, there's an opening in this way, and that's not the way it goes in God. You know, it goes as, Lord, wherever you need me, I'll do it. And God will then lead you to exactly where he wants you to go. Sometimes, I mean, I know some people say, oh, I'll help you wherever it was, but like a person came in, and they only wanted, but they only helped when they were in the spotlight. And I said, that person's never going to go anywhere, and they never did. You know, the people, you know, it says every single person, the priest, the Levite, they were a part of this building. The kingdom, no matter what you're doing, cleaning the bathroom or helping with the computer or praying, we all are equally called in God's high purposes. All of us. And there are two kinds of people you see in the book of Nehemiah. Those who seek to build up and those who seek to stop the building up. The builders and the terrors. Two kinds of action in life, building up, tearing down. And why did they tear down? Why did they tear down? They were jealous. They felt out of it, out of the loop. They didn't get what they wanted. You got to watch out. They had, they had motives in their own heart. And how did they tear down with Nehemiah? By their mouth. They spoke against the work of God. The enemy is, remember, the enemy above all, I mean, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He's the accuser, and the word in Greek, diabolos, means to cast a word, like casting an accusation. In Hebrew, hasatan, means the adversary, the one who comes against you. The enemy's nature is to accuse. So watch when you start accusing people. Watch that, because you could be very easily used of the enemy. When you go looking for evil, you'll find evil. Even if it doesn't exist, the enemy will show it to you. Be very careful, watch your mouth, uh, watch your tongue, especially in the work of God. When you speak against another servant, watch it because you're tearing down God's work. And the enemy loves that. And it'll come back at you. You're empowering the enemy. When you accuse and you gossip, you're empowering the enemy in the sense you are giving him a vessel to tear down. But God is the one who builds up. And we're going to get to that more with that as well. One of the things that the enemy... 